and welcome all of you to our Marshall News Conference, the 13th seeded Thundering Herd, champions of the Sun Belt Conference, uh, winning a very interesting championship game over James Madison 95-92 on March 11th. We are joined here on the dais by Aislinn Hayes, Brianna Campbell, and Abby Beeman, and we will open it up to questions for the student athletes. We'll start with Mark. We'll start with Brianna. Uh, uh, our consistent consistency, uh, how hard we work, um, it's just a part of the system, and we just try to keep up with that, and you know, continue to do that every game. Abby or Aislinn, any thoughts defensively? Um, I can say that I feel like all summer long, like we ran so much, I feel like we're just in better shape than other teams, and um, I just feel like we just go so hard, so. You, you guys are obviously also one of the better teams in the country in terms of making three-pointers. Uh, why, why is this team so good when it, when it comes to shooting threes? Let's go to Nash. Abby. Um, I mean, it's just getting in the gym on your own and, and repping it, so when you get in the game, you know, it's nothing different. It's the same thing you do in practice every day. So I wouldn't even say, you know, as a team, we don't shoot a ton of threes, but it's the extra work you put in outside of the practice hours. Tim. Uh, uh, Kent Lee is out for Virginia Tech, torn, a, torn ACL, and I know you hate that for her, but does that change your game plan? And if so, without giving away the, the plan, how? We'll stay on Brianna here. Uh, it's unfortunate that she's out. You know, you hate to hear that. You know, she had a season-ending in injury, so uh, that sucks. Um, uh, for us, though, we, we still have the same game plan. Uh, we still have to go at it, you know, the same way that we have been, you know, uh, throughout the season and looking forward to this game. So I think it's the same. You guys have had some, some fun home environments um, this year. Um, what are you looking forward to about playing in front of a, another big crowd of set out here um, tomorrow? Aislinn? Um, I can say it's exciting. Um, I know, like, our crowd started getting a little bigger towards the end of our season, and um, I feel like that just motivates more us more to play, and it's fun. It's fun playing against a big crowd. Let's go across. Oh, we're, we'll start with Kelly in the back. Hey guys, Kelly Graham, like I'm calling the game tomorrow. And Aislinn, you mentioned, you know, we ran a lot um, in the summer. And with Coach Kim coming in, this style, I'd love if you could give us maybe some honesty of when you're doing all that running, are you thinking, what is this style and is it actually going to work? I mean, at first I can say I was like, what in the world? Why are we doing all this running? But then um, as the season um, started and stuff, it was just like, it was so much easier, you know, doing the press and um, at the end of the games, like I can say like our legs were never tired. So I know we do a lot of running and practice, but it's just like we know now that it's for our best at the end of the day. And Coach Kim knows what she's doing. Let's come to the front row here. Kind of going off of that, I think what makes you guys so special and so different is, you know, the way she subs you guys and the chemistry of your guys' team that you see on and off the floor. So can you guys just speak to that a little bit? Let's go Brianna, then um, Abby. Um, our chemistry, I think our chemistry is pretty, uh, pretty good uh, this year uh, compared to a lot of other teams I've been on. Um, we're pretty close, I think, on and off the court. Um, and throughout the season, I think that we – started to trust each other a little bit more, you know, trusting coach's process. And it's like, OK, I can ease up a little bit. And we trust each other. We're all supportive of each other. And I think that, for the most part, we're a very uh, close team. Yeah, I'll just kind of piggyback off that. Um, you know, we are a close team on and off the court. And I think it did take us a little bit to kind of buy into the system early on. And you can tell that with some of our early losses. But once we bought into it and realized and trusted in her and what she's doing, um, we were able to come out with some wins and, and just kind of build off that. Yeah, second row. And then Mark. 
uh, Greg Carey with West Virginia Metro News. For Abby and Brianna, having spent part of your career at Division II level, what allowed you, I guess, to make this jump seamlessly? And what were some of the biggest adjustments when you first, I guess, got to Marshall that you know maybe you didn't face at the previous level? Uh, okay, I'll start it off. Um, you know, I was always confident in my abilities. Um, I'm a little shorter, you can tell that. I don't want you to see me play, but so I never got those D1 opportunities. And then finally, I went to Division II, performed pretty well, and got the opportunity to play at Marshall. Uh, it's been nothing short of amazing, and um, I'm just confident in my abilities, what I'm able to do. So that kind of helped me with my transition. And then obviously putting great pieces around me and a great coaching staff has helped me excel. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, to piggyback, like, confidence. Um, I've just, you know, through this whole journey, it's always been just basketball. So no matter what level you're at, you know, you can always go higher if you believe in yourself. Um, and God has always been there, a uh, part of my life, and, um, you know, has been a reason that, that we're all here at this moment, uh, the entire team. So uh, confidence in him, confidence in, in myself and, and work that's been put in, confidence in, you know, my coaches and my teams that I've been on. So uh, just everything has been a great part of being here today. Let's go to Mark. You guys play a lot of people. Uh, what do you have been, what have you noticed this year about how that affects the, the other team? Start with Aislinn. Um, I can say that it makes the other team a lot tired because um, we get to go out and we trust our other teammates to do what they have to do on the court. And um, I just feel like it just tires the other team because we're going at it hard every single time. We're giving it our all every single time we're on that court. So. Uh, third, I think you're one of the top teams in the country in terms of scoring and in terms of points per game. What, uh, what's the result of that? Because why is this team so prolific? Uh, Brianna and Vinavi. Um, I think our depth. Uh, I think that we have a lot of people that you know, in a traditional such style of play, you probably wouldn't get to see them, you know, shine or they wouldn't have uh, an opportunity. Um, so just with this style of play, we have much m many more people that you have to put on a scout and that, you know, has an opportunity to, you know, perform and, and showcase what they are able to bring to the team. So yeah, I really think it's that. Uh, you don't have a lot of size, though. Uh, obviously, we, we, even without Kitley, you know, Tech's got, got some tall people. How do you kind of uh, deal with that tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we can't grow overnight. We are who we are. Um, our size is what it is. So it's something we've dealt with all year, not just this game, but um, all the games we've played. So, I mean, may, may not be consistently the same size Virginia Tech has on the roster, but we have played taller players, guards, posts, whatever it may be, and that's just something you know we have to deal with day in and day out for the most part. So um, in that regard, it's not too much different, but the talent level is definitely a little higher. Let's go to Jay, then Luke, and then David. A lot of talk about the style of play. I'm curious, when did you know this was Coach Kim's style of play? And you mentioned kind of the growing pains. Was there a surprise factor, like I didn't sign up for this? Because it, it certainly is a grueling style. Let's lean into Abby and then go down the row. Uh, yeah, uh, just kind of figured she'd play that style. She's had so much, so much success with it at the D2 level, so why would she come in here and change something up now? But like I already said before, it did take a little bit to buy into it because um, it's new. It's not similar to anyone else in the country, from my understanding. So it, it's definitely something you have to buy into and just trust her and her ability you know, to kind of uh, lead us to some wins and, and trust that this style would work. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, I played with her uh, last year at Glenville, so um, you know, initially I was like, okay, this is a little different, you know, but yeah, you, you get adjusted to it after a while. Um, I used to think like getting subbed out was a bad thing, uh, like you're in trouble or like something like that. Like I like to play as long as I can, um, but you know, after a while you get adjusted to it and you see what it what it does to the other team uh, as far as wearing them down and. Your teammates also having a chance to come in and contribute. So, if you have a, you have to have a you know a selfless kind of mentality uh, with this uh, playing style. But you know you see what it does and you see the success that we've been having uh, so far. So, uh, yeah. Excellent. Um, I can say at first it was 
very different for me. Um, I wasn't used to the sub in, sub out. So at first I was like, why are you subbing me out? But then as the season got on, um, I adjusted and I trusted her process because we were winning and, you know, it's the best thing I ever did, so. Uh, Mark mentioned the size. Mark mentioned the size um, factor and getting Mahogany back after um, some of the games she missed uh, in that middle stretch of the season. How, how much does does that help you guys on court play and the ability to combat some of that um, size differential down low, especially? We'll uh, we'll start with Abby on that one. Yeah, she's a, a big part of what we do, especially on the defensive end. Um, she's able to clean up a lot of our mistakes for us at the rim. She has a pretty good knack for blocking shots. Um, well, we'll see how that goes tomorrow. We got some girls that are, you know, a little taller than her and the same size. But, you know, she has experience playing in the SEC at a Power 5 school. So um, I trust her and her abilities. And, and sometimes there's different things you can do to kind of combat the size aspect of it. Ace, nice to see your reaction. Um, no, I agree with her. Um, in practice, she's always blocking our shots and stuff. So, you know, she's always cleaning up our mess when, um, you know, our defender get past us. We know that we trust her that she's going to clean it up for us at the end of the day. David. David Cunningham, uh, David Cunningham, Tech Sideline. Uh, Abby, I'm curious. You mentioned how unique uh, of a style this is. Nobody else does in the country. When you guys are on, what makes you guys so special? What makes this team so tough for other teams to beat? Yeah, um, I don't think I can give you too much on that, but uh, I will say. You know, when we're running in transition and playing at a fast pace, we're at our best uh, for sure. And then, obviously, this with any team, it helps when you're hitting shots. So um, that's just kind of you know what gets us going. But also to keep a good mentality when you're not hitting shots and just trust that you know the next one's going to go in. That's why we keep shooting them. Uh, Mark, last question. Uh, to follow up on that, obviously, you know, there's other teams that play up tempo. And for people that haven't, they'll come to the game tomorrow that haven't seen you play. Because what is it? What's different about your style of play compared to other teams in the country that you say this is kind of a, a little, little different, a little more unique? Uh, I would just say that um, most teams do like they will play up tempo and stuff, but there is a time and a place where they'll slow it down, call their sets uh, if the game's not going the way they want it to, and that's not really us too much. If the game's going good, bad, we stay the same. We're gonna play how we play, and that's getting up and down. So I'd say that's how we're a little different. We don't really get away from what we do too much. Um, but yeah, you're right. There are other teams that play up tempo for sure. But I would just say that's kind of what separates us. Brianna, you've got the last word. Um, yeah, I think she said it all, um, and also. Uh, the amount of people that play, I think that's different. You know, some people stick to their, you know, maybe seven, eight, you know, depending on factors of fouls and, you know, different stuff like that. But I think that just our depth, uh, we have a lot of people that you probably, probably wouldn't meet the eye test that can come in and contribute to our team greatly. Okay, thank you for your time. Best of luck tomorrow against Virginia Tech in your first round game. Uh, just a reminder to everyone that the Marshall locker room will be open until 235 and that coach Kim Caldwell will join us on the dais here at 225. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.
Hello, Coach. Hello. Welcome. How are we doing today? Good. How are you? Doing well. Glad to be here. Happy to be here. Yeah. Hopefully you are Same. too. Same. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Happy to still be playing. That's right. All right, we're joined by Marshall Head Coach Kim Caldwell, the 2024 Sun Belt Coach of the Year. Joining us here on the dais, we'll open it up to questions for Coach. And we'll start with Tim. No, Coach Brooks announced that, that Kitley won't be playing. Does, how does that affect the way you go about this game? Um, your heart breaks for her. Um, that's a tough way to go out. She's such a special player. You don't really want that for anyone. And so that's hard. That's hard for their program, um, thinking about her, praying about her. But it doesn't really change anything. You know, 6'6", six, six, well, they got a girl at 6'5". So it is what it is. Let's go Mark and then Jay. Uh, your, your first season here at Marshall, and you've gotten to the team at the NCAAs for the first time in, in decades. What enabled this uh, uh, transformation you know, uh, to uh, be so success successful in, in year one at Marshall? I think that I am blessed to have an incredible team. We have a great administration at Marshall that cares about winning and gives us the resources that we need. But we just have, I have great players and they play incredibly hard and they, we got off to a rough start and they bought in and they played hard and they are resilient and they overcame and they believed in each other and here we are. Coach, congratulations to making it to the NCAA tournament. I'm curious, with this unique style that has garnered so much attention and it's, it's deserved, where did you learn it from? Did you take it from anywhere? And I guess, you know, did, were there any doubts that uh, would it work at this level early in the season? Yeah, um, I, I played this way in college, and then I, I met a guy named Bill Baxter out in, in California when I was at Sacramento State for three years, and he really um, taught me this pace of play, the style of play, um, the run and jump defense. And yeah, there were there were some questions early on in November, um, and I just really kind of had to double down. And my husband and I had a conversation. He said, "Do what you do," and went all in and we weren't really subbing as quite as frequently early early in the year and we had to go back to that just to keep fresh um i, I knew it would work that's why i took the job i, I wasn't going to take the job if i didn't think it would work but then our november was rough um so there obviously you're going to question yourself a little bit greg carry with western jam metro news uh question specifically on meredith and her role how has it grown throughout the season and was there a specific game or a point where you could kind of feel her ascending a little bit? Yeah, I think she, our whole entire team has grown quite a bit, and she has been a huge part of that. Our When we found out Mahogany Matthews was going to be out for six weeks, uh, we found out right before we played ODU at home, and Meredith, I asked her before the game, I said, you're going to have to step up. You're going to have to be a big, I, I really need a whole lot more out of you this game. And she took that to heart, and I think she had her career high. high. She had 20 points that game, played phenomenal, and she really hasn't looked back since. She was huge for us in our championship game against JMU. I mean, huge for us, and she deserves every bit of it. And so she's fun to watch, a coach's dream, a great teammate, will give you everything she has. And so I'm excited to see what she does tomorrow. Let's go back around. Coach Keith Morehouse, WSAZ, is, is the matchup as simplistic as saying it's your speed and, and ability to go in transition against their height? How does, how's that all going to play out? Or I guess we'll see, but what do you think ahead of the game? Yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, we have to do what we do. We have to do what got us here. And, and it's so easy sometimes to get into postseason play and think you need to change things up. But you, you got to do what got you here. You got to trust your players. You got to trust your team. You got to trust your bench. Um, and we want to try to make it look chaotic and we want to try to make it look like our practice. I don't think that there's any, any secrets to that. Um, we want to play hard. We want to represent Marshall well in the NCAA tournament. Luke on the front row and then Mark. Luke Creasy, Herald Dispatch. Um, you know, the game ha has grown so much on the women's side um, in the last few years. And obviously great crowds at Marshall this year, a sellout tomorrow. Um, j just what does it mean to be coaching at this level when, when the game is expanding like that? And then, you know, what do you expect uh, as far as environment goes um, tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's amazing. I think the women's game is definitely growing. Women's basketball is the move. I mean, it's, it's the hot thing right now. And at Division Two, you don't necessarily feel that as much. And I really feel it now, being at the Division One NCAA tournament. Um, and it makes you really appreciate everyone, every player and every coach that kind of helped put us here. 
And as a new coach to Division One, it's really cool to kind of just jump on now when it's hot. And a lot of people paid their dues um, beforehand. And I think tomorrow is going to be incredible. And they're not going to be cheering for us, but it's still going to be incredible. And it's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity um, for our program. Mark on the front row. Uh, yeah, for pe people that will be going to the game and tomorrow watching on TV that have never seen you before, because how would you describe kind of the, uh, the style of play, what, what makes it so unique and different from the, the typical teams they might be watching? Yeah, we're going to sub a lot. We're going to cross half court a lot. We're going to press, make or miss, up and down. Um, there's a lot of questions about why we sub the way we sub. And so for people that haven't seen us play before is we want to play every minute of that basketball game like it's the last minute of a tie ball game. We talk a lot about sense of urgency. Uh, we need the ball back. We need the ball back. We need the ball back for 40 minutes. That's how we want to play. And in order to keep us fresh and to order to not wear ourselves down, that we sub frequently. And we're going to do that tomorrow. And that's just kind of the name of the game. And we shoot a lot of threes. And they're going to shoot a lot of threes. And so I think um, it's going to be a very, very high-paced game. You mentioned uh, before run and jump defense. What did you mean by the run and jump defense? That we're going to press. We're going to press make. We're going to press miss. We're going to be up in your space um, trying to speed the game up. Uh, Kelly in the back row. Hey, Coach. Kelly Gramlick. We're calling the game tomorrow. Um, you lead the nation in three-point attempts. I love it. Is there, if you're going to get on one of your players for taking a quote-unquote bad three, what is a bad three to you or a bad shot? Uh, a bad shot to me is if you don't have rebounders in position. So we really want to try to get 50% of our offensive rebounds, and that's high. I'm usually good with 42, 45, um, but we, we go for 50% of our offensive rebounds. And so if you're shooting and there's nobody there to go get the rebound, it's probably bad if, you know, time and score situations is kind of a no-brainer. But we, we want to give people the confidence to shoot because your teammate's going to go get you another shot. Second row. Go ahead. You're good. You're good. Yeah, just uh, in terms of Brianna and Abby making the jump from the Division II level, they've obviously done pretty, pretty well. So what has allowed for that, and what does it say, I guess, about you know, the top-tier basketball that you had with Brianna at Glenville and obviously when Abby was at Shepherd? Yeah, I love that. I think it's one of the one of the better storylines. You have a D2 head coach that moved up, and you have two D2 players that moved up, um, and their numbers really didn't change. They maybe even got a little bit better at this level, and that just speaks to what type of athletes that they are. And they were they were both really, really good, successful Division II players, but they love basketball. They're in the gym more than anyone. They're good leaders. They're When you have really – Passionate seniors, it makes your job easier as a coach because they can kind of corral people around them. But I mean, they've been they've been great, and I'm happy that they both get this moment. Bree and I talked about this is what she wanted. She wanted to go to the NCAA tournament at her next school. We always knew she was going to be at Glenville for one year, and then she was going to go to Division One. It just worked out that she got to go. We got to go together, um, and she wanted to go somewhere where she could play in the national tournament. And she's a big reason of why we're here. Coach, I'll ask you, um, that James Madison game in the Sun Belt Championship was one of the more interesting college basketball games, period, across the country. What were some of the reactions that you heard about that game for people who either watched it or saw the box score? Yeah, I think the 99 shots was, was up there. Um, and the fact that we were shot so terribly, I think we, I don't really know, numbers aren't my thing at the box score, but we, we missed more shots than they took. Um, and so just a crazy crazy game not not a pretty game by any means but I guess that happens sometimes but in that arena there was a giant jumbotron that would basically put up the live stats of how many shots were missing and then you just look at it as a coach and at halftime we had taken 30 more shots than JMU and I'm thinking well we've done everything we can do they're just not going in um, so it was definitely a crazy game it's not necessarily something you you really want to go viral for but at least we won but an, introdu an introduction to a proof of concept for what Marshall basketball is about, the pace you all play it, especially defensively. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a possession-based system. And again, math is not my strong suit, but if you get 20 more <laughs> shots up than your opponent, sure. you've got a chance every night. Yeah. Any additional questions for Coach? We'll go to David in the back. Hi, Coach. Uh, David Cunningham, Tech Sideline. Everybody's talking about how unique of a style you guys play. When this team is on, from what you've seen this year, what makes you guys so special and, and so tough for, for other teams to face? Um, I think that threes are daggers. 
And again, like Virginia Tech, they make a lot of threes too. So it's, it's going to be a really interesting game. But I think threes really are momentum changers, even though it's just one extra point. Um, they just really get everyone going. And we shoot a lot of them. Um, and when we're on, we're usually on. Um, and so it's just kind of a, a different way to play. And then we can score on the inside too at our own level when we're not going against super tall players. So we can score on the inside and on the outside. So I think it's just kind of a, a unique style of play where you're just going to be volume shots. Any other questions for Coach? Coach Caldwell, thank you for your time. Best of luck tomorrow against Virginia Tech. That'll conclude the Marshall News Conferences. Once again, all news conferences throughout the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship are available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. It is just after 2.30. Our last news conference of the day is at 3.45. That'll be the Vanderbilt players followed by Coach Shea Ralph.